I got my mum to take headshots of me in the garden and I just sent it to every agent in London. <laughs> I realised that I had depression. I do think that everything always works out for a reason. My name's Ella Greenwood, I'm a filmmaker and the founder of Broken Flames, which is a production company that focuses on mental health based projects. So we are in one of your favourite cinemas. What is it about these places that just gets you going? Why do you like a cinema so much? Um, I mean, I love the escapism of it, of getting to just, yeah, be immersed in the experience and um, not have to think about anything for a couple of hours. Is there something about like the sitting in these chairs and enjoying a film, switching off, that makes you like at peace? Is there something that really flows with you? Yeah, because I'm, I always struggle to relax. Like I can just never do it. I always feel like I have to constantly be working or there's something that I could be doing. Um, even like if I'm at home and I'm watching a film on the TV, I'm like, mm, I should be doing something else or something will happen and I'll get distracted. So here it's like, there's no way for me to be distracted. Like I'm actually not allowed to. Can you go back to the start and tell me a bit about where your passion for cinema came from? Um, I mean, my parents always took me to the cinema. Um, they loved it and maybe they liked me being quiet and just, <laughs> Yeah, I could be focused on that and I'm um, not doing anything else. So, um, and I remember falling in love with one film in particular and then for my present, like it was, I just wanted to see it again and again and I saw it so many times. Which film? Uh, the first Narnia. Nice, a classic. And you started, like, as a young teenager, you started like pitching yourself, right? <laughs> yes. Tell me a bit about that. Um, so then I, like I asked my parents, I was like, I really, really want to, um, do acting like I want to somehow be involved with films I researched like how actors like their Wikipedia pages like how they got exactly where they were and I realized um, that you needed an agent so I just did as much research as I could um, and I got my mom to take headshots of me in the garden um, and I drafted a letter and I just sent it to every agent in London <laughs> uh, and a few got back to me I mean the stereotype is that you need to be uh, supported by like a wealthy family and that's how the film industry works. Is that the case? What's like the a access points to people who might not be that be from those sorts of backgrounds? Um, I mean I hate to say it, but it is still so much the case. It's yeah it's really hard. I mean most of the people who I think now that you've seen and you know well um, will have gone to private school, will have had uh, connections in the industry. It's not always the case but it's certainly the majority of the time um, and I mean that was one of the things for me like I'm I'm not from a wealthy family in that sense and I didn't go to private school but then um, like when I did my first show my first film um, I crowdfunded for it I was working hospitality still um, trying to save up for it didn't end up saving too much because it I didn't make much from hospitality but again like I just put myself out they didn't have any experience in, and there were amazing people who gave money to the film that I'd never met before, but just believed in the project. Um, and that was just through a crowdfunding platform. I wanted to touch a bit on mental health. It's something that's really inspired you in your filmmaking. What were your teenage years like that made you want to include this in your creativity? Um, yeah, so when I was an early teen, um, I really struggled with my mental health um, and I had no clue what I was going through um, but it just got worse and worse and worse and I had no clue what it was that I was going through. I didn't speak to anyone um, about it and I realised that I was, yeah, I was struggling with mental health, um, that I had depression and the older that I got the more that I watched. I feel like more films aimed at adults because mental health isn't really taught spoken about in, in younger projects but then ones the more that like 15 kind of films I'd seen mental illness and it was really like criminalized and um, you know the villains would always have the mental illnesses and it was really stigmatized and just really portrayed negatively and I was like oh gosh like uh, that doesn't make me feel better at all that's 
um, not really what I want to see. So I think that I wanted to, like with one of my projects, it's a way of introducing young people to what mental health is and what, um, you know, you have the good days, the bad days, but then also some people um, have mental illnesses and that's kind of different. Like I wanted to be able to introduce people to uh, mental health and mental illness, then also I wanted to show it in a more positive light. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, a few different reasons. I imagine a big part of it, especially with the acting side and doing auditions, is failure, dealing with rejection. Uh, what's your advice to someone who may be going through that as well? I do think that everything always works out for a reason. Like, I think so many times, even with small things, like we've wanted one actor and they've said no and it's been like heartbreaking but then someone else has come along and like they are absolutely the perfect person for that role and like that rejection was hard at first but it led to something better and I think that's kind of the mindset to have if you're going for auditions um if you're making films if you get no's it's like well it's just it might not be the right time for that but yeah I do think if you just keep going with it persistence is like everything um, that it will work out in the end. Right, Ella, thank you so much for coming. Thank nice you for having you. me. Yeah, and look forward to all your next films. Thank you.